Hi, today's date is the 30th of October. Plenty of news, let's get right into it. YouTube is going to certify healthcare providers accounts. So then it will be media accounts and so on and so forth. So you know it's just a very slow move into what we know is censor and ship. PayPal has brought back its $2,500 dis, mal and miss info penalty. They'll say they won't do it and then within two weeks it's back and it was very secretive how they brought it back so some eagle-eyed people spotted it. Tanzania has started to ration water due to drought. Brazil is to buy US and Canadian wheat as Argentinian supplies of wheat are dwindling. So um, yeah, uh, 2023 apparently is going to be a bad year for food. India, the world's largest sugar producer, has extended its ban on imports until the end of October 2023. UK's farmers are facing an uncertain future as their costs are soaring by 34%. Branston beans are um, in shortage and it's being caused by the Eastern crisis. Ben and & Jerry's and Marmite prices are soaring as Unilever is imposing a massive round of price hikes. Britain is possibly going to return to uh, the years of austerity as it, as it was in the early 2010s. Two thirds of British shoppers are cutting back their Christmas spending. Now going on to a bit of financial side, Project Hamilton, a hypothetical CBDC. Uh, the MIT and Bank of England have apparently been working on this since 2016, amongst others. And uh, credit to Alaska Prep, I think he did a video on it a day or two back. Turkey is to integrate digital currency with its national digital ID system. Don't accept them. You don't want them. That's it. Digital handcuffs, that's what I'll always call them. The Chinese Yuan is now the fifth most traded currency in the globe. Rusky and the big C country uh, may as well be, um, they are preparing for gold-backed currency, but the US dollar is still the best polished turd in the punch bowl, as Economic Ninja says, because all fiat currencies always find their own intrinsic value, and that value is always zilch. Credit Suisse is now looking to shed 9,000 staff. They've got big problems, them and Deutsche Bank, and I think uh, Wells Fargo in the US uh, the rumours I always hear, but again, they're only rumours. George Osborne's help to buy scheme in the UK has set a BOMB under, underneath public finances and they are ready to go off. Um, and it will be taxpayers, not banks, that are set to lose a fortune. British banks are bracing for a wave of homeowners struggling to pay their mortgage bills. Now I'm starting to see this wave or tidal wave being in many, many articles recently. I think I've seen it six or seven times this last couple of days. So I don't know if it's sort of getting it in your mind for some sort of wave to happen, uh, as in a physical wave. We'll just have to see. House prices in the UK are apparently going to drop by 20% as early as a, um, next year, Lloyds Bank say. Nearly half of Brits are struggling to pay their bills, and that's uh, renters, people with disabilities, and lower incomes are the ones that are struggling. Electric car owners in the UK will face taxes within the next three years. So yeah, yeah, they've given you all these little breaks where you don't have to pay tax on it, or it's very low tax if it's a company car, but by heck, it's going to change soon. Mobile digital IDs are going to triple to 1 billion by 2027. Well, I won't be one of them. And finally, a Chinese tech firm mounts a, a, a drone onto a car and then continues to fly that said car. So the world we're going into, uh, we've got to make sure that we warn others so that they don't just sleep or all of us, sleepwalk us into it. We can't have that. So please pass on to as many as you can. I'll see you on the next one.